Evening folks, and welcome to 965's Toasty Workshop. <laughs> it's absolutely freezing outside, so I'm in the workshop tonight. Uh, I've got the homemade uh, potbelly stove going there. You'll have to excuse all the mess because um, I'm in the process of rearranging the workshop, but uh, this is going to get a good coat of paint on it, and uh, there we go. Homemade flue as well, look. So, uh, yep, yeah, we got a how-to video for you tonight. I've had a lot of people... Uh, um, asking me to do it, so I'm going to do it tonight. We'll be back in a minute. Watch your folks. Here we are um, in the workshop, as I mentioned. Nice and warm, nice and toasty. Um, this is a how-to video for the extended PMR antenna that you saw um, on Black Mountain. A lot of people interested, a lot of people want to know how it's done. It's very simple, very easy, very quick. Um, it's basically... Um, a version of this, you'll probably remember these little doodads that I knocked up, um, the little uh, PMR bazooka antennas, which is still rough and ready. I still haven't made a decent version of it, I'm not going to either. These things work, um, they're fine. I don't really take these out anymore now I've got these bigger ones, this bigger one. Um, but maybe in the future when I get some spare time, <laughs> some more spare time, um, I'll be able to uh, redo them. But a lot of you came up with uh, your own versions. You saw the idea, you ran with it, and it was good to see what you all came up with. So we started a new project um, in CTX called CTX Walkabout. Um, and basically it, does, it involves being on the high ground or, um, you know, out and about somewhere um, and not setting up a permanent station. So, I had the idea of, well, if I'm going to be walking around with a backpack on, um, I could have a Bergen mounted antenna. So, taking this idea here, please excuse the mess in the background, I am in the middle of um, redoing everything, but what can you do? Um, time is short, and um, yeah, so we came up with this version. The tops still haven't arrived yet, so it's still as it was. I've got, um, I've actually ordered them from somewhere else now because they were messing me about. But this is the same antenna. Where is it? So you've got the same antenna basically in the top there, and then you've got the balans, same balans there, and then it comes back out the pipe. But oh, sorry, it goes back into the pipe, and it's got a longer length on it. Uh, this bit isn't painted because it gets down behind the backpack pouch on the side of the Bergen and it just has a little tail on the end and obviously a joiner if you need to uh, that's not required for the build um, and then it's, this one's just got a little tail what you could do is extend the length of this so it goes straight to your radio so you don't have to have a joining piece but uh, I like uh, I like um, multi-function and I like to be able to use it for different things at different times in different ways so um, that's why it's got that so it can be used for other things so you all wanted a how-to so that's what you're gonna get and uh, yeah we'll reposition the camera and um, we'll we'll be back shortly catch you in a minute okay so my advice for this would be to watch the original first and that will show you exactly how to build the bazooka and then all you've got to do is transfer it to a larger length of pipe. Um, for this one I've used a total length of um, just over three meters of coax um, obviously that takes into account that the coax that you use for the ballon don't forget that um, and think oh I'll just use a I don't know, 1.2 meter pipe and I'll use 1.2 meters of coax. No, you have to take into account the length of coax used in the ballon. So if you go with, um, I think I've gone with 3 meters 10. If you go with 3 meters 10, you should be all right. Um, and um, that's enough. I should have been a bit more organized, really. But the length of the pipe that I used on my rucksack is uh, 1 meter 25. So if you're using a piece of conduit that's 1 meters 25, then 3 meters of coax should be uh, should be plenty. Now, quick recap on the actual antenna itself, and it's this one here. So as you can see there, or hopefully you can see there, you have the antenna is an exposed length of inner dielectric, and then the braid that covered that gets folded over on itself and pulled back down below the exposed dielectric. Now a few people have said they've had an awful lot of trouble folding the braid over. 
never ever had an issue with it and I know an awful lot of other people haven't either but not everybody can do everything so what I shall do um, at the end of this video is a very quick braid folding demonstration just in case people are trying to do it the wrong way or they're trying to make things difficult for themselves so what we've got here is another excuse my grubby mitts I've been working on stuff all day um, what we've got here is another version or a, another production of the bazooka antenna you've got the inner dielectric here as you can see it's um, had its braid taken back and then that braid that was there is now here okay and following the dimensions that are on that sheet there or from the previous video will tell you how much exposed inner you need and how much of this you need fold it back over you only have to chop off about that sort of much so it's not a lot of wastage at all um, and for a 1.25 meter length of conduit which is what I've used and it's the one I use on my rucksack you will need about 3 meters 10 of coax that will make sure you've got enough um, to get you to the bottom of the pipe and it also takes into account the um, ballon don't forget to take into account the coax required for the ballon okay so I've still got this on the roll at the moment it's still attached to my um, 100 meter roll of uh, RG58 which is what this is I'm going to experiment with some RG213 at a later date this one worked an absolute treat so that's what I'm going to go with so I'm just going to um, chop that off the roll and then I'll get ready to show you the winding of the ballon on the pipe won't be a sec okay so got the conduit here I've gone ahead and made the holes for the pipe to um, exit and enter if you like and if you can imagine that this is the antenna and try and do this at arm's length the antenna is going to sit in the top portion of the pipe here it's going to come through that first hole there you're going to wind the ballon here yeah and then the um, cable is going to go back through that hole and down to the bottom where you're going to put your, your connector on if you're going to do that or whatever you're going to do entirely up to you how you do it again love to see uh, what you come up with now one thing I will mention and I didn't do this on the original and I had to um, retro trim the top of the pipe um, leave some out of the top for trimming for SWR. So on this particular one, you'll see, I can show you this a bit better, that that is where the ballon is gonna start in at that hole. And it actually sticks above the top of the pipe. Now, I found, I found generally that it's about that much you have to trim back for SWR, but it's not always, it's, it's a bit strange. So uh, one of the bazookas is slightly longer than the other out of those little doodad ones I made. Um, so that's what I would advise you to do. Leave about that much sticking th past the top of the um, pipe and you're more than likely just gonna trim that off anyway for SWR, but each one is gonna be different depending on what coax you use, etc. So that's what we're gonna do. So first thing to do, is to find the opposite end of the coax okay like that now this can be a bit fiddly at first I'll tell you what I'm blooming roasting with that fire on <laughs> so I'm gonna make actually incidentally I'm um, talking about projects I'm gonna make a small version of the potbelly stove um, to go backpack portable with and um, I should be able to have a nice little contained fire on the top of the hill so what we're gonna do is take the end of the coax and we're going to pass it into the pipe. Now, you'll see I've put a bit of a curve on there. Hopefully you can see there's a bit of a curve on there. Put it in with the curve facing upwards towards the hole. That way, when you push it down, it will want to naturally come out. So we're just going to push that in there now. And just feed it down. You shouldn't need, you won't need anything to pull it down with. It will go down on its own. You might need something to take it out of the pipe with but you might not. So there you go, you can just and just see, hopefully, uh, come on, focus. There you go, it's ready to come through the hole. Now I'm a terrible person for having short nails, so I will have to fetch something to pull that out with. And um, it just so happens that I have in my arsenal of tools. Oh, wrecking the joint. 
I have in my arsenal of tools the ideal job. Don't ask me where they came from, they just appeared in my toolbox. <laughs> so there's the hole, there we go. I'm just going to get in there with the forceps of all things. They're ideal because you can actually clamp them down and they won't come off. So you can close them and you can let go and they stay closed, But it's, which is ideal. So I'm just going to pull that through the hole like that. Undo the forceps. Scalpel nurse, please. Okay, so pull that all the way through. Again, I'm, hopefully this is uh, it's reasonable quality. I'm certainly not a film producer. So you can push it through from the opposite end. Look, it's pretty easy. It just comes through. No problems at all. There we go. You can see it just piling out. Okay. Might need to help it a little bit on its way. There we go. Okay, so I'll turn that around so you can see. And we're just going to feed that down into the top of the conduit. Down, down and down. Okay, now, of course what you could do is make one on the small piece of pipe, like I did with the original. You could make one on a small piece of pipe like this, put it up on a pole, trim it for SWR, okay, so you know it's done. Take it apart, yeah, and then just have it so that it sits level with the top of the pipe. You won't need to cut it again. The only downside with that is you'll have to chop off and refit another one of those if you're going to do that, and it may change. Wee! That wasn't an earthquake. That was me and my lack of balance. Um, so yeah, it may change for whatever reason. There might be a different production in the pipe. It might have, you know, whatever reason. So I like to do it in the pipe that I'm going to use it with. Now, just so you can see, there's the end of the... I use a bit of tape just to tell me where the end is. And you can see how much is sticking out the top. So we're just going to feed that back in a touch. There we go. And that's now ready to wind the ballon. So what I'm going to do, just to help me out here, is take a small piece of um, black insulation tape I've got today. A bit of black. And all I'm going to do... Yeah, put in the light. Is uh, I'm gonna have to close that door because that's roasting in here. Um, I'm just gonna put a band of tape on. Nice, pull it nice and tight. Keep it nice and tidy. Just a single band like that. See, nice and neat, nice and tidy. There we go. And that actually holds it and it makes it easier to wind the ballon. And then all you're going to do is wind it round the pipe on the outside until you've got 15 complete turns. Okay? So I'm not going to sit and do that on cap. Um, yeah, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I will do. I'll do it on the camera just so you can see that I'm doing it. This is my preferred way of doing it. Just wind it up and then as you go each one is another turn it doesn't take very long at all um, one two three four five six seven I'm gonna keep it nice and tight nice and neat okay now might I get have the whole space is slightly wrong but we'll see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, that should be 15, we shall see when I count it. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, that is the 15th turn there, that one there, you can see it's a nice tight tidy ballon, okay, there we go, and again what I'm going to just do is to help you out, is if you just put a piece of tape on, which I'm just going to do now, just bear with me two seconds, again, try and get, try and get it nice and tight and neat, there we go, okay, so that again will just help it hold the cable in place, but there you go, that's essentially the, uh, that's the ballon made, 
And if I just bring in the other one, you can see exactly how it is in comparison to the other one. And it's almost identical, which is good news. So that's that there. And then all you're going to do is find the end of the coax here. And you're going to feed that through that hole there. Okay. Down to the bottom of your pipe. And that is your antenna made, pretty much. Um, all that remains really is to put on a PL259 and it's already well hanging out the bottom of this pipe so three meters is probably a little bit of an overestimation it's not going to be required three meters and um, you say once you get it to that stage just give it a little push and a pull and that goes in a hole like that and there you go and that's the uh, that's the antenna made essentially um, once that's trimmed you trim that off, that should be either flush or below the top of the pipe there, and then you can pop a cap on the top. Um, again, as I said uh, in the other video for the Black Mountain, I never had the right cap. I had to use one of these. Um, it's not the right cap, it's a 22 mil diameter cap, and this is only a 20 mil diameter conduit. Um, but I had to get out and use it, because I'd made it, and um, it worked fine, it's a bit messy, but um, <laughs> it's a damn sight tidier than the other ones that I made. So when the pipe, uh, when the caps come, we'll be able to cap that off properly. Um, but obviously, it's good enough for SWR. And once you've done it, you can either you won't even need to put a bit of heat shrink over the top of this one this time because the cap will do the job. It will sit over the top and it will seal it up nicely. Again, you can use a bit of uh, like um, plastic weld adhesive. They sell it in the plumbers merchants, or um, you could just put a little one band of tape on. I quite like black with green, um, so it's not really an issue if you do that. Although electrical tape isn't the greatest outdoors. It's not very weatherproof, um, and any serious weather will um, will start to it'll just it'll just break down. And in the summer, if you use it in the summer and it gets hot, it shrinks. Um, and stretches and it's it's horrible horrible stuff really electrical tape um, but it, it, it does the job for now I say this is again really is a knock up now this one's ended up with quite a long tail in relation to the bottom so it may well be enough to go straight into the radio we'll have to see um, on the bottom again you can pop a cap on there that sounded a bit gangster didn't it you can pop a cap on there. <laughs> um, obviously, you will need to put either a hole in the cap and put it on before the PL259 or just have a little um, push-in cap with a hot, slight hole in it so it just fits in there nicely. Now, one thing I'm going to tell you, it's quite strong, okay? It will take a fair amount of bashing, although it didn't get really a proper weather test on Black Mountain. But... To give it some rigidity, all you're going to need is a little piece of wood like this. Okay, um, you could use um, round dowel that fits the pipe properly, and you could, if you're so inclined, route a groove in it to accept the coax. But you don't need to. Um, if you just have it with the coax um, on one side of the pipe, okay, you can slide can't really show you it too well because it's long. I'm just going to slide the pipe up inside. There we go. So the wooden dowel just goes up inside the pipe. You can see the tail there. That holds the tail against this because if it starts flexing around, you might get that clacky, you know, plastic on um, plastic clatter. And you can push it all the way up as far as the ballon. And this one is actually just about right there. So there you go, that gives it that extra bit of rigidity. You can see that one doesn't really want to bend, whereas this one that we've just made will bend considerably. Now, it's not a problem, a bit of give in the wind is not a problem, but if you just want it to stay upright that little bit more, then all you need is a simple piece of wood. And that's pretty much it, chaps. Um, well, folks, that's pretty much it. I got told off the other day for saying chaps because apparently there's a fair few female watchers, which is uh, nice to hear. And um, yeah, so there we go. That's it. 
Told you it was simple. <laughs> I, I tell you no lies. Um, there's nothing else to it apart from finishing off with the SWR trimmage and the um, putting on of the connector at the bottom. So there we go. Now, what I'm going to do is reposition the camera and I will just do a quick demonstration of folding over the braid for those of you that are struggling. So we'll catch you back shortly. Okay, so um, just because I think it might be helpful to some people trying to uh, make uh, the bazooka and struggling with the, the braid fold over, you've gotten to that stage, you've got the braid stripped, you've got the jacket off, and you're ready to start folding. Now what you're aiming to do is get this braid here to go this way over the outside so what you need to do is you need to flare open and uh, Gary 104 did do a good uh, demo of this as well on uh, his uh, bazooka for 27 megahertz but this is what you're basically trying to do is flare open the braid now not only are you trying to bunch it up and flare it open you need to try and keep it round okay if you if it gets if it gets crimped in like that bit there when you try and fold it over it will just get snagged. So try and try your best to keep it round as well as um, flared. So just push it down. Again, try and keep it. You, know, you can take your time over it. Take your time. There you go. See, it's nice and relaxed. 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 Keep it nice and relaxed. Okay. Keep going down. Just try and keep it nice and nice and round. Keep going all the way down to the point at which it needs to go and you can see that it wants to fold over the top of itself there so just keep it all all nice and as I said relaxed that's the length that the braid was so you can see how far down it's gone and again I've got a couple of pinch points there which I don't want because I find they always get snagged up so there we go right now what you're going to do is push this across to there you're just going to push it across so here we go keep feeding the loose braid from the back on because that's what you're trying to push down and you can see we've already done that portion there look and then you're just going to pull it down Okay, pull it down. Yeah, this is the bit where this piece can get caught on itself. So just pull it, pull it, and pull it through. And there you go. That's what we refer to as folding the braid over. So hopefully that was of some use to you. Um, as I say, I've never had a problem with it, um, but uh, I know a lot of people have. So there we go. Okay. Now, although uh, I said electrical, electrical tape is not the greatest, it's advisable to tape this up um, with something. So for this, I am going to use electrical tape, and I'm just going to show you, that if you're going to do it, do it from the bottom first, okay? And then each overlapping section will drain the water down over the section below it, rather than the water trying to get in to each join so you can see there you just pull it on pull it really nice and tight okay now Pete a lot of people are probably thinking why is he not following the contours of the ballon no reason for it no rhyme no reason just am okay and if you pull it tight it will actually contour very nicely to the uh, the actual part itself, trim it off, and there you go, a nicely wrapped coaxial ballon. Okay. So that's the end of the video. There's nothing else to say really. Go out, Esther, uh, go and put your uh, PL259 on the bottom, connect her up via your SWR meter, and um, trim it for SWR, pop the cap on the top, good to go feel free to paint it in any color you like I uh, do like a bit of NATO green so uh, yeah that's why it's NATO green um, also helps blend in in the uh, on the hills and stuff can't stand uh, standing out on the hills so there we go from this 
original idea and concept to this little doodad, which is a backpack mounted um, portable PMR antenna. Um, you probably saw on Sunday, but what you can also do is put your backpack down, and as long as it's got enough weight in it, this will stand up, and you can use it as a sort of a sort of a, a temporary base antenna, if you like. And uh, there's the one to be done. So um, you'll probably see this one out and about with me next time. Um, hopefully, the cat will have turned up by then. Uh, the original idea was to use those the the conduit end caps that go on there, the little domed white domed ones. Um, you quite often find them on the marine antennas and stuff um, but for some reason they, they messed me about messed me about messed me about um, a couple of emails later I said forget it it's only a couple of quid for five so it's not a problem um, so what I've ended up doing is getting some uh, 20 millimeter um, silicone end stops which are normally used on silicone hose but they'll stretch over the top of this really nicely and give a nice seal so there we go until next time when we're out and about won't make it out tomorrow, which is Sunday. I've got so much to do, and we're trying to wind down and get stuff done for work as well. So it's going to be another missed radio net, unfortunately. But um, can't be helped sometimes. You've just got to get on and get it done. So there'll be some more projects on the way. I've got to drive on heavy-duty mass plate to do. Um, I've also got uh, a few other bits and pieces in the pipeline. So cheers, everyone. Catch you next time.